Hey guys, it's meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather with this morning update. We'll start in Colorado where the Panhandle hook storm has now exited and skies have cleared. It's a cold morning at about zero or below zero at a lot of the ski areas. Loveland ski area here reporting uh, nine inches in the last 48 hours. Up at Aspen Snowmass, another seven at uh, Aspen Highlands. So you're doing really well. I think you're at like 230 now or more for the season, which I, from what I hear is really good, above normal um, for Aspen Highlands. All right, let's talk about the, the headlines here. Um, so we're in the midst now of a, of a larger western pattern shift. The last of the atmospheric river storms is now moving out of Colorado, and behind it, the pattern, the jet's going to start to move more in a northwest orientation. So it's going to run up from the Pacific Northwest down through the northern tier states, High pressure will become more of a factor across uh, California, the West Coast, and running out into the Pacific. Um, and then in the Northeast, so all of this activity now will begin to slide into a deep trough up in the Northeast with two or three different storm systems. And I'm still forecasting some big totals uh, over the next seven, eight, nine days. I'll show you those coming up in just a few minutes. So let me go back and show you the, uh, the water vapor uh, imagery from this morning. So reds and oranges represent the drier air aloft. Let me mark the storm. So there goes our panhandle hook storm now moving out, and that becomes a storm system for the Northeast here shortly. Behind it, there's a storm system, but notice the activity now is sliding further to the north. So let me mark this. There's a bit of ridging now going on across the west. Big trough in the east supporting the development of these lows. So anyway, this high is going to become more of a dominant feature, work its way into this area. That's going to force the jet to run like this through the end of the month. So the moisture will move in to the Pacific Northwest in BC and then run down through the northern tier of states through Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, brushing the Wasatch and moving down through the central and northern mountains of Colorado. That'll take us through pretty much the end of the month. Um, let me show you the jet pattern. In fact, this is 128. So um, by the time we get to 128, you can see where the high is. It's starting to retrograde, um, and that marks potentially um, sort of a start of something new for the month of February. As that high retrogrades back uh, into the Gulf of Alaska, North Pacific, that's going to open the jet and some lower the atmospheric pressures across um, most of the West. I think once we get into February, we're looking at more of a storm track that favors more of the West. Um, you know, you can see what's happening there on the 28th. The storms are going to run down through the Pacific Northwest, uh, BC, Banff, and then down into Montana, Idaho, potentially Wyoming and Colorado. And maybe we can shift that jet further west and open the door for more places as we head into the month of February. Um, so let me show you what this looks like as far as a forecast radar and satellite. So by the time we get into Friday morning, one last low kind of diving down through the four quarters and affecting southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, and then it's gone. Now everything is coming out of the Pacific Northwest. Here's Monday morning at 6. Uh, notice where all the action is. It's all up north, Pacific Northwest, BC, Banff. Everything's sort of running down through the northern tier of states. Very dry in California, Nevada, southern Utah, and Arizona as we head into the, uh, the 120 to 127 period. Everything's just coming out of the Pacific Northwest and BC. All right, let's talk some, um, some snow numbers here. Um, here's my forecast all of today through the, the 21st. A little leftover snow in California, another 1 to 3 in Colorado with that uh, that's a leftover low that's going to dive south, potentially hitting Brian Head, Snowball, northern New Mexico with 3 to 6. But all the other numbers are pretty light, 119 through 121. All right, here's the second period, 122 through 128. Now with this, notice the northwest orientation of all the snowfall following the jet. Um, nothing huge for the Pacific Northwest, but some decent numbers there through Sunshine and Marmont and uh, Revelstoke. Uh, and then everything kind of races through Montana. The Tetons look like they're in pretty good shape. And the central and northern mountains of Colorado will be the beneficiaries of this type of flow with 6 to 12 inches during that time period. Let's talk the Northeast. This is where things are pretty interesting. So there are two to three different storm systems. Um, now late in the period, the last two storms are, are larger, and the totals will depend on the exact track of those. So how tightly they hug the coast, how much snow they throw into the interior. Right now, we're looking at probably two feet is the sweet spot for most places. 
Yesterday the numbers were bigger because the, seconds, the, the second and third storm system were a little bit closer and they were throwing more snow into Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So we're going to see that track shift. There's, it's undeniable. It happens all the time when you look at long-range forecasts. So we'll see, but we're still looking at two feet during that time period. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in here for this early morning update. Always appreciate it. Take care.